This is Sona, how you train your Gavin. Amen. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. I am so excited because today I get to relive my childhood. Way back in the 90s, I used to watch a TV show, just a little TV show, called Sabrina the Teenage Witch, starring Melissa Joan Hart, my absolute idol. And it's a TV show about a teenage witch who gets powers on her 16th birthday, or at least I think she had powers beforehand but they were dormant, but they just like awakened on her 16th birthday. I need to rewatch the pilot episode so I can clarify that. Or read a book, but I'll get to that in a minute. And Sabrina lived with her Totem Cat Salem and her two wacky aunts, Aunt Hilda and Aunt Zelda. Absolutely adored the show. I would watch it every morning before going to school and it was just brilliant. I used to collect the magazines, I even used to get the books but for the longest time I kind of lost those books and I had no idea where they were and I still don't know where they are. So slowly but surely I started to recollect the Sabrina the Teenage Witch books which there were a series of books that were released while the TV show was airing pretty much like a lot of the classic TV shows like Charmed which I own all of them of but with Sabrina I didn't really collect religiously but I did have one or two. So I'd say since the beginning of this year I I started to try and find old copies of Sabrina the Teenage Witch books on eBay and this is the collection that I've managed to get so far. So I did want to try and get all of them but I think there are around 55 of them and a lot of them are quite hard to get hold of now so it would have been quite costly to try and hunt them down as well as time consuming and ain't nobody got time for that but I do have 17 of them. So I will continue scouring eBay for more copies of Sabrina books because there are like quite a few cheap ones as well but yeah these ones are the ones that I have for now. So I won't be reading all of these in this vlog. Will I? Hmm. I mean, maybe. I mean, today is Saturday. I'm celebrating Sabrina Saturday with my patrons. We're going to be doing some reading sprints in half an hour and we're going like pretty much all day and then we're going to have a watch party tonight where we're going to watch the pilot episode of Sabrina as well as all of the Halloween episodes which are arguably some of the best episodes of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So I'm really excited for that. So I think I could probably knock a good few out today. And this vlog isn't going up for another six days. No, no, I've read so much this month already and I'm honestly sick of my life. But I'm excited about these ones. So I'm gonna try and read as many as I can. No worries if I can't read all of them, but I do wanna read as many of these as I possibly can. So I did actually get my patrons a few weeks back to vote for which books they would want me to read. So I have compiled a list of them from the most voted to the least voted. And this is what that looks like now. So this is the reading order that I will be reading them in. So we have Sabrina the Teenage Witch. This is just a novelization of the very first episode. So actually this is a great one to start off with. And I will be able to maybe compare it with the episode when I watch it later today. And I think that might be a good little thing you would probably to do. And then I'll be reading Halloween Havoc, which honestly I was so happy that this one was voted quite highly with my patrons because I really wanted to read this one. Out of all of the ones in my pile here, this is the one I wanted to read the most because Halloween's coming up, I'm so excited. And I am doing a nine vlogs of Halloween event on my channel. And this is part of that, my Sabrina the Teenage Witch vlog. So reading a Halloween book, Perfect, perfect vibes for it. And then I will get to Good Switch, Bad Switch, All That Glitters, Age of Aquariums, Now You See Here, Now You Don't, Scarabia Nights, It's a Miserable Life, Showdown at the Mall, Eight Spells a Week, which is apparently a super edition and it is the thickest Sabrina book I have, Shamrock Shenanigans, Switcheroo, Reality Check, Lots of Luck, Spying Eyes, Bridal Bedlam, and finally Wake Up Call which I might not end up getting to anyway. <laughs> so these are all of the books and the order I'll be reading them in. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these or if you've read a Sabrina the Teenage Witch book at all. Maybe you have one that you remember that I don't personally have, but I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to chat to you about it as well. Let me know down below. So without further ado, I will set up for my Sabrina sprints with my patrons and then I will have the most magical day imaginable. And I hope you do too. So I hope you enjoy the vlog. Let's go.
Sabrina Saturday was so good. It was so good. I had so much fun. The episodes we watched as well were pretty fantastic, honestly. It reminded me of how great a show Sabrina is. Like, it's so funny. So we ended up watching the very first episode, the pilot episode, and following that we watched the very first Halloween episode, which was called A Halloween Story. Season 1, Episode 5, A Halloween Story, the one where Sabrina streaks. <laughs> which is so weird but actually it kind of comes into this one the the second book that I read for this it's not the same story by any means it does have the photo from that episode on the front as well as on the back so I thought it was maybe a novelization of that but it wasn't that's fine and then we watched season two episode seven which was called a river of candy corn runs through it really good episode I remember really enjoying that one and then one of my favorite episodes of like the entire show season three episode six goodwill haunting which is when she gets a molly dolly doll and it kind of comes to life and Sabrina has her friends over and they're kind of being chased throughout the house. It's so good. So I love that one. I wonder if there's a novelization of that episode because I would read the shit out of that. And then we ended up watching season four episode six The Phantom Menace which again I really enjoyed as well as season five episode six The Halloween Scene. So that was like the last Halloween episode we watched. There is another one in season six I think that's like Murder on the Orient Express inspired and I remember enjoying that episode too but you know we had gone for like about eight hours hours that day so like we didn't watch any more after that but it was just so fantastic so good loved it if you want to try my patreon link down in the description box so i've read the first two sabrina books and i actually read them slower than i anticipated really i wonder if it's because i've been reading so much i think i've read about like over 30 books so far this month and it is what day is it? Oh my god. It's the 18th. So yeah, that's kind of like two books a day, kind of. So I don't know if maybe I'm just like slowing down because I'm not feeling burnout by any means. I'm just like, okay, I kind of just want to do something else right now. I kind of just like want to play a game. I want to listen to music, you know. I just wanted to like do something <laughs> other than read. But I did start this during the first sprints of Sabrina Saturday and I was really enjoying it. I didn't realize actually that this is really three novelizations in one. So it's the first episode, the pilot episode, which was only like six chapters. And then it's the episode, The True Adventures of Rudy Kazuti, which I ended up remembering as I was reading. I was like, oh my god, this is all coming back to me. And that's the episode when Sabrina's looking after a baby and she accidentally says oh, big boys don't cry and the baby turns into a full grown man so she has to like deal with that problem and then the last episode that's adapted in this one is called dream date and I kind of remember that one but yeah I thought this was like pretty decent actually it was very funny and that's what I love about Sabrina is when it's like funny and it kind of lands the jokes that is in the tv show I feel like it adapted very well in a book format there are some where the joke is drawn out a little bit too long where I can kind of say you play in my head from the episode but when that's in book format it kind of felt a little awkward because it was being drawn out. But one of my favorite things about Sabrina in general is just how she is just a normal girl who finds out she's a witch on her 16th birthday and I love that slow progression that slow realization of it and how that gets her into trouble like pretty quickly. Like she ends up turning Libby into a pineapple so if you remember that honestly you are an OJ but that was the very first episode and yeah some of it was really good. I love how Harvey is described in it as well he's called a hunk in it and honestly I'm not disagreeing I used to fancy the pants off Harvey back in the day I think his name is Nate Richard or something like that oh he was oh stop Sabrina had it all there were some things like added as well like tiny tiny little things especially when it comes to like Jenny the best friend it felt like in the pilot episode some of her parts were a little bit cut like such as her introducing herself actually I realized when I was watching the episode she doesn't really quite introduce herself but in this one she has like a longer introduction and you get more of a little bit of a backstory of her I don't know if maybe that was just cut out the episode for time constraints but the pilot episode is just like six chapters in this so <laughs> it's weird but it didn't feel jaunty or anything either it didn't feel like we we're going like from one episode to the next to the next because I think between the second and third episode that's adapted in this it kind of happens halfway through a chapter so it kind of like flows almost rather than just end whereas with the pilot episode going into the next episode oh my god there's a fight outside she's shouting don't get your hands off it put it back he's calling her a liar right, okay not gonna lie she is trouble. She's the only person on the street who causes trouble. Anyway, I'm gonna try and ignore some of that <laughs> and we talk about this. I love the way that it ends with, I remember it's like one of my favorite moments of the show. It's like 
it's a perfect end of the first episode is when everything goes back to normal uh, she wants time to reset itself from turning to be into a pineapple and you know she is allowed that and she runs home from school and she's like so happy that she's going to be seen as normal and she's like I'm normal I'm normal let me just tell my cat <laughs> okay that's normal <laughs> well it kind of is actually talking to your cats is very normal at this point but I love Sabrina and I love how this perfectly captured the essence of the show I know it was just adaptations but yeah, it was good. But fortunately, I think the next one, Halloween Havoc, that I read was its own original story. But the pitfall of that, actually, is that a lot of the dialogue in this doesn't really feel very genuine to the characters. And I don't think I laughed once during this. I mean, I might have smiled at, at points, but I didn't really laugh. And one of the things I love about Sabrina is that it's a sitcom. It's funny. And I just didn't really find this one funny. And I was a little bit confused about timeline as well, because Jenny is the best friend in season one. And then she leaves at the end of season one. And then in season two, we have a different best friend, Valerie. And in this one, this is one set a year after the first Halloween episode, which was when Sabrina streaks. And Jenny is in it. And I guess, you know, it's not really a fault of the writer because the writer probably didn't know that Jenny would get written out and stuff. So it kind of like carves its own kind of timeline. It was also a little confusing because this is book one and this is book four, but book four is set a year after Sabrina has moved in. So that's like a big time jump. But it's fine, it's fine. I haven't read book two or three, so I can't really talk too much. Actually, the next book I'm reading is book three. Good switch, bad switch. So who knows? Maybe things will get cleared up a bit better. And these are just random books based off the TV show. I'm not taking them too seriously. So that's that's a non-issue. That's a non-issue. But the story is that Sabrina wants to throw a Halloween party, but Zelda isn't really wanting her to. So Sabrina convinces her. And when Sabrina does hold the Halloween party, things go a bit awry. And she has like a classic monsters from the movies theme as well. And Libby also kind of has a party at the same time. Like she host a secret Halloween party. It felt like maybe the season two episode, A River of Candy Corn Runs Through, it borrows some things from this book because this did get released, I think, did this get released before? Before that episode aired? When did this even come out? Oh, it says 1999. So this came out, well, the first season aired 1996 to 1997. So this book came out, what, two years after Jenny left the show and two years after that season two episode. Hmm. Maybe it came out earlier than that because this is a UK copy. And maybe the UK got the books later than everyone. I, you know what, I'm going to double check and I'm going to put it on the screen when this actually came out. So you can ignore what I say if you want. But I also love that, you know, pocket books, £3.99. £3.99 for like little books like this. And it was kind of the same with the charm books. Oh, I wish we lived in a time again where TV shows had regular books based off them that were like really cheap, you know, like not even £5. And you could just like get them and read them quite quickly and like still have a good time. I just wish we had those again. Maybe we do and I just haven't seen them. But oh, you just can't beat like the old 90s and early 2000s when books just came out on the regular based on those TV shows for such a low price. Ah, oh, bring me back to those days. Anyway, yeah, it was an all right book. I love the Halloween atmosphere of this. I think it captured the Halloween essence so well, but it just wasn't funny. And again, I just don't think the dialogue came across as quite genuine to the characters. But I will say Diana G. Gallagher, she wrote some Charmed books. That name rings like such a huge bell for me. I've definitely read Charmed books written by her. So I do know she can deliver. So I'm looking forward. I think I might have another Diana G. Gallagher book in this stack too. I do. So three, four, five. Yeah, the sixth book I need to read, which is Now You See Her, Now You Don't, is written by Diana G. Gallagher. So who knows? Maybe she's found her foot with the series. I can imagine it's quite hard to write an original story and make it not feel like fan fiction because that's kind of what it felt like actually. It kind of felt a little bit like fan fiction. There's nothing wrong about that. Nothing wrong about it at all. But I need that authentic Sabrina feel. And I just don't think it really delivered the authentic Sabrina feel. And I was more excited about this than any other book in the stack. But I, you know, I'm not criticizing it too much. I'm taking this at face value. I'm not gonna criticize it too much. It is what it is. And I'm not gonna rate these books either, I don't think. That's kind of fair. Oh, I, I don't even know how to rate them because again, like this is adapting three episodes. This is essentially fan fiction. So I don't really think I can rate them. Maybe at the end, I'll rank them of how I preferred them rather than giving them actual ratings. And we'll see where we go from there. I mean, I do still have all of these, but I think I'm going to try and get up to maybe Scarabian Nights and spend today reading a few of these. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Although it did take me ages to read the first one and it shouldn't have. Who knows? We'll see. But I'm going to read Good Switch, Bad Switch next. And I'm actually really excited about this one as well because Sabrina's got Spellfluenza and she sneezes 
And she ends up swapping bodies with Libby. Oh wait, no, hang on. She doesn't swap bodies. I think Libby gets Sabrina's powers because Sabrina sneezes and, and Libby sneezes at the same time and Libby gets Sabrina's powers. <laughs> okay. I love that idea. I don't know if they ever did that in the show. I would really need a serious rewatch of the entire Sabrina show from beginning to end. I remember a bit of seasons one through four, but after that, it's like very spotty. But even before that as well. But with Libby, I don't think Libby ever got Sabrina's powers in the TV show. But it's a great idea. Love it. Can't wait to read it. And I'm going to do that right now. But I'm going to say if this fight is still going on. I don't know why I didn't tell you guys this before, but I actually have spoken to Melissa Joan Hart on the phone before. <laughs> like, this is like a really weird flex. But uh, I used to work for Spoiler TV, if you don't know. I used to do articles and write things and reviews and stuff. And when Melissa Joan Hart was filming Melissa and Joey, which was a sitcom on ABC Family, I got to, you know, talk to her and interview her over the phone. And it was so good. And if you want the proof, here's the proof right here, okay? We spoke on the phone, we chatted about, I actually think it was for the episode where Aunt Zelda appeared. I believe the actress made a cameo appearance in one of the episodes of Melissa and Joey. And I remember asking her a question about working with the actress again. I think her name was Beth Broderick. And I remember asking that and she was just so nice on the phone, honestly. I, I can't even really remember the specific things we talked about. Genuinely can't remember. I probably did say, oh, Melissa Joan Hart, I absolutely fucking love you. <laughs> probably said that. Yeah, I just randomly remembered. I'm currently editing the vlog, just what I've got so far. It just popped in my head. I, I put in an image of Melissa Joan Hart in the vlog and I was like, oh my God, I've just remembered I spoke to her on the phone once. <laughs> so I thought I would tell you about it. And yeah, it was good. It was very good. Loved it. So as you know, I have lots of fairy lights in my library. My middle grade section has fairy lights. My YA and adult section has fairy lights. Well, my classic section, I didn't want to put fairy lights there as well. I think that's just like too much. Too many fairy lights in one room. So I decided it's the classic section, right? Oh crap, I haven't lit one. It's a classic section, right? You don't want to overwhelm them with fairy lights. It won't feel authentic. So what I did instead, so Cody from Cody's Book Corner, in her latest vlog, she had these gothic kind of LED candles on her shelves and I love them. And I was like, Cody, send the link. So she sent the link and this is what it looks like. There's quite a few of them. Um, but there's one up there. I, can you get like a really good shot? Like I haven't got the best lighting right now, but I've got like that at the top. But then I have them going all the way down, all the way down. Oh my God, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> like not to blow my own trumpet here, but I genuinely feel like maybe the classic shelves are the best shelves in this room. Potentially, I mean, there's a lot of candidates. There are a lot of candidates here today, but oh, Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Although that's not what you came to this vlog to see. So I'm going to do my little review. Oh, that rhymed. Uh, am I a witch? Of the next two Sabrina books that I read. Good Switch, Bad Switch was the next book that I read for Sabrina. Yeah, I think I pretty much told you what this book is about before with it being about Sabrina sneezing and it's actually whoever's nearest her gets her powers but when she sneezes again she gets them back but when Libby, Libby gets her powers she can't get them back that easily and yeah so now Libby has Sabrina's like powers and Libby is power hungry and she gets quite power hungry and it's quite interesting like what she wants to do and things and it was like a really good storyline I really enjoyed the storyline again I can't really remember if the show ever did that because I love seeing Libby with powers and what she would do with it it led to some like quite comical situations especially since there was a moment between Libby and Salem in Sabrina's bedroom that was quite good overall I think that like the POV stuff was a little bit jaunty and there were too many switches of the POV between like Sabrina and Libby and it didn't naturally flow half the time. Again, I'm finding with this book series, especially with it being comedic or supposed to be, I'm not finding them kind of talking authentically like the characters. And that's like a huge thing for me. I don't think I can really overlook that because Sabrina's Sabrina, you know? And when she comes across as something totally different, I just, I, I don't really like gel with that because I see Sabrina as Melissa Joan Hart. I see the way she portrays her in the TV show. And with these being based off the TV show, it's hard to see 
them in a different like way like personality wise or the way their dialogue comes across it's just I'm not loving it as much as I want to again it is kind of like dated it is quite an older book and you can feel it and that's fine and yeah these books are just turned out like quite fine at the minute nothing's really like blown me away or felt too wholly original. I will say though the storyline was the best thing about this but execution wise who wrote this? I mean actually David Cody Weiss and Bobby J.J. Weiss adapted the first Sabrina book. They wrote the kind of novelization of like those three episodes that I mentioned earlier. So I kind of thought oh maybe they would take the voice from the novelizations of those episodes and kind of bring it into their own original story but it kind of just didn't really lend itself well into that. There was much to be desired. Things do wrap up quite easily which happens in the TV show as well actually. The TV show wraps a lot of things up like very easily. I guess that's kind of like the downfall of you know Sabrina have this kind of magic system where you know you just like really point a finger at something and magic happens and a lot of times it doesn't always work out that way but this is like the foundation of this magic system. It's kind of easy. There's not really too much like thought process into it and I think sometimes situations just like wrap up far too quickly especially in the TV show but it kind of happens again in this. Things are wrapped up quite easily and it just didn't really feel like too much of a struggle which is fine. It is fine but it was interesting to see more of Libby even though like, again it didn't really feel 100% authentically Libby but you know I just kind of went with it by the second half of this book and I was just like you know what this is what I'm gonna get I can't change it so let's just enjoy the ride while I can. Leading into all that glitters I think I actually like prefer this one over Good Switch Bass and in fact actually this might be one of my favourite ones so far in this vlog. I would have to like properly rank them but this one follows Sabrina and her aunts they go to a flea market in another realm and like this flea market is only for witches and while Sabrina's there she gets some wish dust and she takes this wish dust to school and then she accidentally like spreads it among the students so all different random types of students get the ability to ask for something, wish for something and for it to come true. So I really enjoyed this one because it was a little bit more comedic than the other ones and that's what I love about Sabrina. We have really sitcom-y kind of situations with it and as well as like some really great cameo appearances by some uh, you know celebrities you know we had Leonardo DiCaprio, we had Winona Ryder and I just find that hilarious. It would have been so great to have seen that brought to life in the TV show and you know what some of my favourite books that are based on my favourite TV shows are the books that I feel like oh that would have made a fantastic episode and yeah this one would have made a fantastic episode. Didn't quite you know live up to my expectations of it though but this one I feel like it kind of it gave me the premise and it delivered on that premise and it was funny and engrossing as I was doing that and then in the end of it I was like oh I do wish this was an episode I do I don't quite think they would have managed to get Leonardo DiCaprio in the Sabrina TV show I don't know I don't know they did get Britney Spears in the TV show so who knows you know it was the late 90s although Leo would have just filmed Titanic so maybe not. But one can dream or one can wish as one might say. I will say though I feel like the ants are portrayed probably the most authentically and maybe even Salem as well. I think they're the kind of characters that are portrayed the best in these novelizations because they have really specific character traits and you know Salem he is very sarcastic and funny and you know that does come across quite well. The ants they have their dynamic and Hilda and Anselda you kind of know what you're going to get with them and I think the books have done that well. It's Sabrina I think. Sabrina is my problem with these books is that I just don't really feel like this is Melissa Joan Hart you know. Harvey's usually fine Libby's sometimes okay, sometimes she comes across as way too cardboard. And I guess the same could be said about the TV show as well. When we were re-watching the Sabrina episodes with my patrons the other night, I noticed in the very first episode Libby was just, you know, like a bully for the sake of being the bully character in the show and yeah it didn't really come across as very authentic either then. I do like Libby, I like the way she progresses over the three seasons she's in and when I say progress she doesn't really have this huge character transformation by any means but you do see more of her, she does become quite funny and in the books I don't think they've kind of got that kind of funny and mean side of Libby together. It's usually just one or the other but it's mainly just the mean side. But I would have to say I, I think I prefer this one the most out of all the ones I've read so far in this vlog. I think I'm probably only going to read like two more because I'm struggling I'm not gonna lie. I mean they are short but I'm finding myself getting through them so slowly. So I think I want to spend tomorrow reading another two and then we're gonna call it a day. You know I think six Sabrina books 
is good enough. They're not really offering me anything too different. And you know what, I think I would read more. I mean, I do own more Sabrina books. I would like to dive into them every now and then. But as a kind of palate cleanser between harder and denser books, I think these kind of books based on TV shows are great as palate cleansers. I think reading them all in a row and seeing the kind of pitfalls of them being a, a sort of adaption rather than it being a genuine authentic story on its own ground and its own merit. I think that's the problem with these kinds of books is that when you read too many of them in a row you start to see that they're not exactly what you want from them if you know what I mean. Like I want to pick up any Sabrina book and know that I'm getting 100% Sabrina you know, but I just think it's kind of an impossible task with it being a totally different format because books totally different to TV and you get this whole different kind of style and characters you don't see, you have to like read and kind of infer what you think of them or how you perceive them onto the page and that can be so hard especially when you know dialogue is such a huge part of it and I don't think the dialogue's quite hitting any of the books. I think just reading one every now and then is like enough. Reading too many at once is I think too much. And you know what, I could say that about everything that I've done this year with all of these complete series folks I've done. It definitely goes for Goosebumps. It definitely goes for that. If I read Goosebumps every now and then, I probably wouldn't say all of the glaring issues I have with them that prominently if it was spaced out. Sabrina needs to be spaced out, I think. So I'm gonna read two more. And if they don't absolutely amaze and blow me away, then I think I might call it a day after those two and not push it because I don't want to get sick of Sabrina. I never want to get sick of Sabrina. So I think it's time for bed. And when I wake up, I hope I'm in the mood for Sabrina. We've made it to the last update because I genuinely, I can't do anymore. <laughs> I'm not saying these are terrible by any means. They're really, really not. But I genuinely think these are not meant to be read all in a row. This is the case of don't do what I do. And that's cram too much at once and learn from my mistakes learn from my mistakes but i will say that i did enjoy both of them like honestly they are solid books they are good but because i'm comparing them to the tv show and how these books represent the tv show they just don't hit they really don't i don't think any of them have really hit the sitcom side of it in terms of actually making me genuinely laugh. And this vlog update is sponsored by Pumpkin Spice Latte, which I already read before this update. I wanted to save this for the update, you know, so I could causally drink it and talk about these books. But I drank it too fast and now I just have my standard coffee that I make at home. So Age of Aquariums, which I keep singing. It's the Age of Aquariums, whoa. It's the Age of Aquariums, oh. This one is actually pretty good. I really enjoyed the story of this one. We had Sabrina, she's on a school trip to an aquarium and she sees like this strange thing in the water. So she ends up transforming into a tiny mermaid and goes into the water. And she sees that what this thing is at the bottom of this like aquarium tank is the lost city of Atlantis. And like, that's just so bonkers and great actually because I love the story of Atlantis. And I love reiterations of Atlantis and that story and like how different things kind of approach that story. And you know what, Sabrina did a pretty good job at that. I actually really did like the way Sabrina explored it, the way she was trying to bring it and restore it back to its former glory, all the while trying to protect her secret of being a witch from Mr. Craft. All of that was pretty good, honestly. Sabrina was pretty fine as a character. I loved when Sabrina goes to the other realm to find the lost and found apartment and she takes Salem with her and people think that he's a badger a cat and stuff like that. Like, that's kind of funny. So I like the Sabrina Salem dynamic. And all in all, a pretty solid read. Honestly, a pretty solid read. I think maybe my favourite one in terms of actual plot and story. Yeah, this is how I feel like this is going to be the ranking. I'll show you at the end. But yeah, I think, mm, okay, I want to keep my mouth closed there. <laughs> and finally, now you see who now you don't. I love that this is like a very old, like a really, really old library copy. I love this inside due to be returned slip thing. There's two there. And the first time I think it was checked out was, I think that's here's the 11th of May 2000. Yeah, I think the 11th and then the 17th of May 2000, 7th of June 2000. Lots of it upside down and, and blurred now, but we're going through like 2000 up to 26th of January 2006. So that's the last time this book was ever checked out at the library. And then they must have sold it. And oh my gosh, like seriously, the pages were like so old and yellow. I mean, 
I do have old Serena books, but you can really tell that this one is a very old one. And I love it, honestly, I love that. Some of the pages were stuck together, but it didn't hinder the reading experience whatsoever. It's just old, it's just so old, I love it. So in this one, we have Sabrina and the Quizmaster. I don't know if you remember the Quizmaster. I think, was it from the second or third season? I should know this, I literally just rewatched the Halloween episodes. It might have been season three? Season two? Season three. Was season two when she was trying to find out the family secret. What's that season three? Oh my God, <laughs> this is why I need to rewatch the show. But the quiz master, he is kind of giving Sabrina like pop quizzes on magic and her controlling her powers. So in this one, we have Sabrina popping in and out of like different forms of media, like television shows and books. And Sabrina assumes that it is part of the quiz master's plan. Every single time she disappears from the real world into the fictional world, she lasts there a little bit longer and she's worried that she will end up getting stuck stuck in some other form of media indefinitely if she doesn't figure out what's going on and how to stop it. So a really fun way to, you know, explore Sabrina and especially since Sabrina is first and foremost this iteration of it a TV show, it was really funny to see the kind of like meta-ness of it as Sabrina goes into like Star Trek Voyager for instance and like seeing how a TV show character in book form handles a TV show, you know what I mean? Like, I, I like that. That was really fun. And probably the, this felt the most sitcom-y of all the ones I've read so far as well. And it reminded me of that Supernatural episode, Changing Channels. I think that was in like season five. And it reminded me of that. So that was pretty good. Turns out we have Amanda, her really bratty cousin, who we met in the first Halloween episode. It turns out like she's like behind it all and stuff. And, and it was really fun to have that other character kind of be part of the main plot and especially like a kind of side character from the TV show. And it was fun, it was really, really fun. And that again is just all I can really say about it. <laughs> but I will say probably like these two, the two that I read yesterday, are probably the two stronger Sabrina books. And these are 16 and 20. So I feel like maybe the writers hit their stride with adapting Sabrina into original book format stories by the like kind of, 10 plus mark. I mean, all that glitters. Yeah, actually, because all that glitters was also another really good one. That was number 12. So I feel like maybe the kind of first 10 Sabrina books were maybe a little bit hit or miss, but I think maybe they hit their stride after that. I would need to read more to, you know, back that up with fact. But in terms of ranking the stories then, I would say Halloween Havoc was probably my least favorite, mainly because, I mean, I love the atmosphere and I love the Halloween setting of it, but the dialogue was just not authentic enough for me to believe that these were Sabrina characters. So I think this is probably like my least favorite and this was like the one I was the most excited for. And then Good Switch, Bad Switch, again, love the idea of it, but the constant switching of POV really did great on me after a while, especially since it's such a short book but good storyline and I would like to have seen it as a TV show episode. And then the very first one, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the novelization of three episodes, this still made me laugh and I loved seeing it be adapted, but it wasn't like original because it was based on the TV show like episodes. So it's not fantastic, but it was serviceable and a really good starting point into the Sabrina books. So gotta give it props for that. And then my third favorite, All That Glitters, I think was a really good storyline. And I thought like bits of it was pretty funny. And then my second favorite was Now You See Her, Now You Don't. Again, loved the story and felt very sitcom-esque, so I enjoyed that. And then I think my favourite one of this bunch was actually Age of Aquariums. And after reading the title of this, you know, just based off the title, I would have thought I wouldn't like it as much. It just doesn't sound like something that I would really love, but Age of Aquariums, with it dealing with Atlantis, I love that. I love that. So I thought that was really, really good. So this is my ranking of the Sabrina books. And I had a really fun time, actually. And this is probably going to be my shortest nine blogs of Halloween episode because I, I, I don't think I can go on. I genuinely don't think I can go on with more Sabrina books. But I think after a big break, I probably would read it. You know, maybe if I'm just having a day off and I just want something quick and easy to read, a Sabrina book would be perfect. I would only recommend these two fans of the Sabrina the Teenage Witch TV show. And if you just like want something a little bit extra from that TV show that you can easily digest in book format, then it's perfect for you, I think. But I think for people who maybe aren't that bothered by Sabrina, might not enjoy it as much. 
because it does rely a lot on our prior knowledge of the characters and what we already think and feel of them to tell a story. Because there's nothing detailed about these. There isn't any way of you really getting a sense of these characters being their own because they're based on a character from a TV show. So definitely only for TV show fans and I still had a blast reading them. Even though I think reading them all at once is not the way to go. So that was my Sabrina and the Teenage Witch vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Let me know your favourite Sabrina and the Teenage Witch episodes. If you loved or read any of the books, remember to let me know down in the comments. I would love to read them. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for Well One doing the Sabrina Saturday with me and the watch parties. I thought that was so awesome and fun. But my patrons, thank you so much for supporting my channel and just being incredible people. If you'd like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media, then all of the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.